Okay, welcome to Menopause at Work Month. I'm chatting with Mi Michaela Newsom. Michaela, do you want to just tell us a bit about what you do and then we will tackle the topic? Hi, thank you, Emily. Um, I am a registered nutritional therapist and I help support women through menopause and beyond um, to optimise their health and basically look and feel their best during this rather turbulent time of life. <laughs> Slightly turbulent, yes. <laughs> and that turbulence when it's at work is so difficult. Yes, it is. I mean, um, the statistics about women in the workplace um, kind of around menopause are quite horrifying, really. Um, I mean, menopausal women are actually the fastest growing demographic in the workplace at the moment. And yet one in four women consider leaving work because of their menopausal symptoms. And actually one in 10 do. That's 10% of the workforce. Um, just leaving because they can't cope with their symptoms or that the support isn't there in the workplace for them which I just think is horrifying yeah um, you know I don't want to get onto a full-on rant but can you imagine if it was the other way around and it was 10% of men wanting to leave the workforce because of symptoms that they were struggling it just wouldn't happen so um, yeah it's definitely something that I'm pleased to see now is becoming quite a topic in the media and stuff and people are beginning to talk about it more and um, because more definitely needs to be done absolutely so um looking at it from kind of your standpoint so from a nut nutritional therapist standpoint what can we do to keep ourselves kind of on our a-game when we're at work when everything's changing so um thinking about kind of the things that you're going to be struggling with during um perimenopause it's Things like fatigue. Um, now, fatigue could be caused by um, a number of things. So it could be anemia, because obviously at this time of life, um, women are obviously str struggling with really heavy periods, which can make you slightly anemic. So it's making sure that you're getting all the nutrients that you need, um, you know, plenty of iron rich foods. Um, the other things that are going to be going on are things like hot flashes, um, struggling with motivation and mood, um memory is a huge one um due to kind of all the structures that go all the changes in structures that's going on in the brain um and actually as you age as you get older um your ability to make acetylcholine which is the memory neurotransmitter as it were declines so it's really important to eat nutrients like choline which is found in eggs um to try and help that kind of thing go on um, and then other things that kind of happen are we kind of lose our resilience to stress. And so, um, you know, things that we'd have been able to deal with beforehand actually set us off and you end up like blubbing in the toilets over something, you know, that before you'd have, you wouldn't have even noticed. Um, and then there's that whole kind of real loss of confidence in your ability. So from kind of a nutritional point of view, it's things like I mentioned about the nutrients, making sure you're getting the right nutrients to support those changes. Um, eating a good breakfast. Now, I know there's a whole thing about intermittent fasting and that's really popular. Um, so it might be that you're not eating breakfast at home before you go to work, but whether you eat breakfast at work or at home, it's really important to get that really, that first meal of the day is um, a really good kind of solid nutritional base because that kind of sets you up for the rest of the day so you want to make sure that you've got plenty of protein in there um because that will help keep your kind of blood sugars steady so that you don't feel um like snacking you don't get cravings um but also it means that you don't get that dip in blood sugar that leaves you feeling a bit irritable moody um and you know given the kind of reduction in resilience to stress snapping at people um so that's really important. Um, the other thing as well with kind of blood sugar balance is that um, when your blood sugar drops too low, you release stress hormones to try and bring your blood sugar back up. Um, but one of the things that's associated with increased severity and frequency of hot flushes is dysregulated cortisol, stress hormones. So it's really important to keep your blood sugar balanced so that you keep your cortisol levels um, as they should be. Um, and that's where as well, things like um, take a lunch break, make sure that you are finding time in the day to de-stress and step away from that kind of environment. Let your kind of nervous system recalibrate. Um, 
most people nowadays they tend to like work at their desk work on the go, work on the go um, not only is this not great for your digestion um, if you're kind of eating quickly or eating on the run then you're not going to be absorbing nutrients properly or digesting them properly um, and I've already mentioned that getting the right nutrients is really important so make sure that you take a proper lunch break um, make sure that you've got plenty of um, phytoestrogens in your diet so things like flax seeds and um, soybeans um, now they contain uh, chemicals called phytoestrogens which are very similar in structure to estrogen now obviously you know one of the issues main issue in perimenopause is the kind of fluctuations in estrogen and phytoestrogens just help balance that out and level it out so that you don't get the wild kind of peaks troughs lows that kind of trigger some of the symptoms. Um, so phytoestrogens are in things like flax seeds, soy, and um, also things like chickpeas, lentils, um, and legumes. Um, and the way that they work is because they've got a similar structure to estrogen, they can bind to the estrogen receptors, but they don't have strong effects. So for people who are worried potentially about cancer risk, um, they're not actually as strong so if you've got high estrogen it kind of reduces the effect of estrogen but if you've got really low estrogen it increases it so it's a really nice modulator it helps to kind of balance it out whether you're high or low um, and flexible working now that's not an option for everybody um, it very much depends on the kind of job that you do but if you are in a supportive workplace or if you work for yourself, then, um, you know, working from home on days where, you know, if you've got really heavy periods and you just can't face going into the office. Um, but that's more about like having the chat with your boss to kind of make them understand what your needs are and kind of get them their support. Um, now, you could say that at the moment it's a good time to be having those conversations because there's so much about menopause in the workplace in the media and stuff um that um it's a good time to start having these conversations with your bosses um or hr departments um because of this focus and you know we we often think that actually one person i'm one person it's not going to make a difference what what difference can i make but there's an estimated five million women of perimenopausal age in the workforce at the moment so um you know every voice counts and um you know there's lots of companies now that are actually doing menopausal work support really well so you know get those examples and speak to your kind of hr departments um, yeah and i think just further to that i'm just going to quickly go for it. in there um i think sometimes people think oh i work at if people work in a quite a male dominated industry they sometimes think oh I won't get any joy doing that but bear in mind that all of those people that you work with even if they're all male they all have wives sisters yeah. mothers whatever so the raising the awareness at the workplace isn't just about the individual it's about it you know seeping out into the world at large so I think it's still really important yeah um yeah I mean, that's a that's a really good point you know although and I think that um you know historically you know menopause I think Men tend to be a bit scared of it you know it's lady problems they don't really understand it um and so it kind of gets brushed off but actually like you say they they've got wives um you know sisters that are all going through the same thing so um and i think particularly in today today in kind of today's um times that actually because it's being talked about a lot more um that actually their awareness is probably a lot better than it was say five or ten years ago absolutely um so you know those are some of the things that we can do um breathing exercises actually it's not specifically nutrition but when you're sitting at your desk just taking a couple of minutes to do really deep slow breathing can actually really help there's loads of research that shows that uh, breath work can actually reduce the severity and frequency of hot flushes so um you know if that is a symptom that you're struggling with then trying to incorporate that into your um, everyday life can really help. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Michaela. Some really useful tips there. No worries. Thank you. <laughs>